lines between church and state have been blurred for centuries, but despite the rise of secularism, it is still not as clear as it may seem. Far-right Israeli politician Avi Maoz is the Knesset's sole representative of the Noam Party, an ultra-Orthodox anti-LGBT party. In an agreement signed with Prime Minister-designate Benjamin Netanyahu, Maoz will be placed in charge of Jewish identity, a move that has angered many. And Israel is not alone in what critics say is a move to a more religious state. A new law in Indonesia was passed, banning sex outside of marriage. Qatar's Sharia law has also been put under scrutiny due to the World Cup. On the other hand, in Iran, protests have been ongoing for months following the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini in police custody for not wearing a hijab, suggesting a strong push for a move in the opposite direction. But is that necessarily a good thing? Are laws based on religion archaic and outdated, or are they a good line for the basis of laws? Should any state around the world be dictated by religion? Can a theocracy and a democracy coexist? Should religion and politics mix? So let's get to it, uh, gentlemen. Should religion and politics mix? As always, we'll begin with this quick fire round of 30 seconds uh, each to lay out your initial stance on the matter, and we'll pick up the conversation now from there. So, Mr. Fleischer, please take the lead. Thank you very much for having me on. I think I think that we are looking at an Israel that is more trying to be more like a France and an Australia, where you really feel the culture. You land in the place, you're like, oh, it's it's an Australian country, it's a French country, it's got the wine, the cuisine, and and the songs and the music and the you know. Or in America, you feel like it's Christmas. You're like, wow, I could really feel it in the streets. I could smell it in the stores. Here in Israel, we have Hanukkah. You're not exactly sure it's Hanukkah because it doesn't smell like Hanukkah. There's not a lot of lights of, of Hanukkah. A little bit here and there. We want to bring the culture back. We want every young person to know the 12 months uh, of the year, yeah. the Jewish months of the year. We want basic, fundamental love of our authentic Israeli culture and not a secular uh, coercion to oh. get rid of these things and get rid of the Bible as a oh. kind of underneath it pillar of Israel. Yes, we'll put a stop right there and obviously unpack it uh, further in a split second. Uh, lawmaker Kasif, your take, please. Yes, of course, uh, I support totally, totally distinction, a separation between church and state or between religion and state for a very simple reason. It is a matter of uh, a private matter of each and one uh, of uh, each and every one of us. Each and every one of us uh, is uh, entitled to uh, live according to one's own beliefs. And uh, any kind of religious induction into politics and the state rules is uh, involves coercion. And we are, I am, against coercion, secular coercion or religious coercion. In that sense, the state yeah. must be neutral. Okay, Mr. Shulman, last but not least, your thoughts? Okay, well, I don't agree with either of them. Um, the reality is I believe that this is a Jewish state and it has Jewish cultural values, but I'm not particularly interested in Jewish religious values as part of determining what my daily life is all about. Uh, there needs to be a clear separation between religion and state. I don't think, you know, Judaism is not, or Israel and Jews are not just a religion, they're also a peoplehood. Right. They're a strong believer in the Jewish peoplehood. It's history, all that comes with it, and the state should reflect that. But it should not reflect religious views of ultra-Orthodox rabbis who are coming so far from my set of values and beliefs that I certainly don't want them involved in my day-to-day -day life. Okay, and on that note, uh, gentlemen, please feel free to interact from this point uh, onwards. And, and let me begin by asking uh, the following, uh, and uh, Lamiker Kasif, uh, if you may be the first one to answer. Is liberalism a form of religion? Absolutely not. Of course, each and every ideology may be turned into a religion if people uh, use uh, the specific ideology or philosophy they believe in to coerce and uh, to justify one's uh, 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 beliefs. But uh, it's not necessarily so. Liberalism, basically, and not only the so-called, uh, not only the topical one, but uh, if we go back to the beginning, to the ideological or philosophical separation between uh, state and church, between politics and religion, uh, the beginning is more or less with some liberal philosophers like John Locke, John Stuart Mill, and others. Each and one of them gave us a, a, a different uh, 
a justification, a philosophical justification, moral justification. Yes, but, 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 but Mr. Kassif, uh, Marx, Marx did not intend for communism to become the Soviet Union. At the beginning, of philosophical theories are, 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 are not what they become. The question is, has liberalism become a religion? No, absolutely not. I would not say it's become a religion. Become, I mean, the re reality is liberalism just people, means that we do not want people, other Gentlemen, people. it's some difficult to hear the both of you us. together. Mr. Some, Kassi, please uh, conclude people, your uh, remarks, and then we will hear Mr. Schulman, some please. People, yeah, some people do refer or treat liberalism as if it was a, a kind of religion. But as I said before, I am against any kind of coercion. Yeah. Uh, in order to prevent coercion, in that sense that we're talking about, the state must be neutral. That means that it must cling to democratic basis. And of course, it cannot absorb or endorse any kind of philosophy, ideology, including religion. Uh, uh, religious yes. people should should enjoy the, not only their own uh, rights of worship, right. but also respect. Right, but, but, but their but, respect should not be at the expense of the respect for those who are not religious. Yes, but um, Mark Schulman, what uh, Mr. Kosifa claims to be neutral policies is not neutral for the other side of the divide, for example. For example, well, it's not neutral for the other yeah. side of the divide because the other side of the divide is trying, you know, with greater or less success over the whole history of the state to impose their values on the rest of the state. Now, Ben-Gurion made not certain compromises. So. He thought they would disappear. Obviously, they have not disappeared. But the reality is liberalism means exactly what it stands for, is that a government should not impose its views on the people. We should be liberal and allow people to decide, up to you know following certain laws and everything else of that nature. A liberal belief is not a belief that's anti-religious or pro-religious or anti-anything. A liberal belief just means that, Mr. Uh, Schulman, until until freedoms, not so long ago, wish. we had a health minister, Nitzan Horowitz, who uh, uh, promoted LGBTQ reforms in the uh, health ministry, the respective ministry he headed. Some would uh, suggest that uh, these reforms are not neutral. I'm not taking a stand, obviously. But he didn't make anyone become LGBT. He just provided services to people who he believed were underserved. So, I mean, that's not being an activist in that sense. He wasn't saying... Well, let's convert everybody to be LGBT or whatever it might be. He's, no, he provided services, additional services that were not being provided. I think that's quite naive to say that's, it that way, since, uh, since a, there's a education, there's education to towards that ideology. As many people as it possibly can. Yes, Mr. Fleischer, please. I think it's naive to say that it's just providing services. I think that there's an agenda out there in the West and parts of Israel to force down the throats of religious people, LGBT uh, uh, ideology, not just rights for those people, but the idea that that, uh, that, that value system should be educated in schools. I don't think people want that. I think a lot of Israelis really don't want that. And I think that it's important to realize that, that Israel is a liberal state on the one hand, and I think those values are important. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's also a Jewish state. And it's a national state of the Jewish people. And so that what I was talking about at the beginning was really things that continue that 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 tradition and those those feelings towards what it is to be a Jew, what is it to love our stories, what it is to love our Hanukkah, what is what is it to have basic un knowledge of like our prayer books. Do we have that? Oh, we recently, that. No, we recently we recently had an effort to get rid of the Tanakh from education, from the Bible from education. We want Bible to be That's part of the true. education it's system. Fake news. That was false. It's still it was not no, fake news. It was not fake, fake news. It was very real news. You quoted before. Sorry, I do not. I do. I didn't uh, get your name. Sorry, Mr. Ishai uh, Fleischer. The, uh, yeah, please. No, no, I'm talking about the host. Sorry. Ah, my name is Ali. Pleasure, uh, Mr. Kasif. Thank you for Ali, being on okay, the show. Okay, sorry, sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, look, you uh, mentioned before, quoted before, the catastrophe that goes on in Iran, the executions, the uh, persecution. What Mr. Fleischmann wants is exactly that. We will not let them do that. Now, I would like uh, to you say you another see how, thing, how, how absurd. No, I you like you to just, say another thing. Ms, Ms, uh, Knesset Member Kassif just I, made I an excellent example of, of, of left-wing propaganda. The, how could you possibly right say that a person like me would want an Iranian-style persecution? It's just absurdity. It's just an absurdity. You, you, you revealed yourself for being such if a propagandist. How could you even say such a thing? to rule, it means that you are interested in a persecution of those who do not accept biblical laws. Now, I would like to say another thing. 
Absolutely I absurd. Some, and and, and so to equate, to equate a Jewish so love of the Bible I to the Iranian persecution is just, so just an absurdity. It reveals that what kind of person Everybody should yeah. be allowed to pray. I, I'll be happy to, to, to speak. Please. Can I speak. May I speak? May I? Please, speak? Mr. Kassif. Thank you. Thank you. I personally, though that's not the subject now, so I just mentioned it for the record. I personally support a democratic state, which means by definition that it should be the state of its all citizenry and only of, of its all citizenry. So in that sense, I do not accept the uh, gist of uh, uh, the definition of a Jewish state. But I put it aside. Let us assume for our conversation, for the sake of an argument, that we all support the idea of a Jewish state. Again, I reserve it, but I, yeah. I, reserve, I, I have my own reservations for yeah. this idea, but I put it aside. There is a debate as to what is the meaning of Judaism, of Jewishness. It reminds me that uh, Ellen Darshowitz, who is far from being in my own political or philosophical views, wrote ages ago a very interesting book called The Vanishing Jew in America. And he says that, he, he specifies there, a story that happened to him when he approached his bar mitzvah. And he said, when I approached my bar mitzvah, I began to think, what is the meaning of being Jewish? I went to my father and asked him, what is the meaning of being Jewish? And he gave me one answer. Thereafter, I went to my mother, she gave me another answer. Yeah. And my grandfather and grandmother, etc., <clears throat> etc. Et In the end, he came back to his parents and said, look, my conclusion is that being Jewish means not to agree what is the meaning of being Jewish. Uh, Only and, and, and I was with Mr. Dershowitz state, this week, okay, yes. and Alan Dershowitz Alan told me, I, I, was, I was with Alan Dershowitz this week, and Dershowitz told me that, that last year he Mr. went to Plasher, synagogue. Please. Mr. Pleasure, please speak. Yes, Mr. Kassif, yes. your point has no been made. Yes. Mr. Kassif, Mr. Kassif is mentioning Dershowitz, and Dershowitz told me personally last week that he was in synagogue last year for his 83rd birthday and was able to read the Torah portion of Mishpatim because he knows Judaism. Judaism. It Anytime. is extremely Anytime. difficult to uh, hear care. both of you. But, uh, but the I question of what Judaism Anytime is is a really important sense. question. Because Just I think second. most of us, quote unquote, liberals, don't oh, Mr. Kassif will speak ad nauseum. Can you? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay. gentlemen. Gentlemen. That's really the one question. It's not a. Yes. One short sentence, please. In the 10 seconds we have left, please, Mr. Kassif. Yes, of course. I object in 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 a. I object any kind of enforcement and. Yes, a point made. Yes, we we fully understand this. I'm against religious, but I'm also against against. Sit question question being whether at the end of the day the elected representatives are simply executing what they're promised uh, what they promised to do similarly to Horowitz uh, promoting LGBT reforms now Avi Maz wants to uh, promote his reforms we will continue our debate right after uh, the break of course uh, uh, so you uh, are not going anywhere Shai Fleischer Mark Schulman and Ophel Kassif thank you very much uh, for uh, this and we will be back with part two of our summit uh, right after the break don't go anywhere Welcome back to the summit. Uh, still with us, Mr. Mark Schulman, Mr. Ishai Fleischer, and uh, lawmaker Mr. Offer uh, Kassif. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for staying with us. We're also staying on topic, but we do want to try and expand the discussion uh, to a more global one. Let's take a quick listen before we go back to the debate uh, to some protesters in Indonesia. Uh, and if I wouldn't have mentioned their location, they might have, uh, could have been uh, sound uh, from essentially anywhere else in the world. So let's take a listen and pick up the conversation from there. The government should focus on fulfilling people's civil rights, the economy and culture, such as job, vaccines, healthcare, and so on, and they should have passed laws related to that. Instead, they passed a law that is not democratic, that controls our private lives, and does not take care of public matters. It is a setback for our country, which has fought to reform, and now we are moving backwards. Although this law is made for the public, when we examine it closer, these laws can put people in jail instead. That's why we are promoting public awareness, that the public should know all of us can be charged under this law with the tiniest actions, and everything we do has high potential to be criminalized. So let's get that to it as the fight for or against religion, uh, local or a global one. Uh, we once again begin with this quick fire round of 30 seconds each and uh, then the uh, conversation. Mr. Kassif, take the lead, please. Yeah, I, uh, everybody remembers that uh, Karl Marx, and I'm a, a well-known uh, socialist, 
said that the religion is the opium of the masses. Now, I still think that's true, but that doesn't mean that I do not respect the right of people to worship. So again, as I said before, we have to analyze and to think what makes people in our times, in some places, more religious. And I think that the answer is based on a social and economic issue. I think that the class issue is the reason for people to retreat in some yeah. respects to the Middle Ages. Well, and I think that yeah. the solution then is not only privatization of religion, yes. but also to give a real answer to the yeah. obstacles and the difficulties on the economic issues. Yes, yeah, so, well, some would suggest that uh, the uh, 20th century was the anomaly in this respect, uh, that it was less religious than others and not uh, the uh, a certain progression. But we will leave that uh, to it. Uh, Mr. Fleischer, your thoughts, please. I think that uh, it is a global issue in the sense that there's a fight today between secular uh, globalists, uh, universalists versus nationalists, who believe in conservative values, who believe in the family, who believe in the Bible, who believe that culture is an important part of the state, uh, as opposed to places that have become completely secularized and forgotten mm -hmm. you know, what, what it's all about. By the way, uh, countries like the United States still have blue laws, and certainly when you come there, you can really experience uh, 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 you know, religion yeah. in, in a great way, like, like Christmas, the way they celebrate it. That's the way we want to have Hanukkah. We want to have fun. We want it to be an awesome spiritual experience that you can really uh, feel um, in the streets culturally. Without, without, yeah. We're not trying to take away rights. We're trying to give people opportunity. Oh, please, 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 please. Oh, okay, Mark Schulman, please. Okay, I think it's a global phenomenon. It's one that we do not understand yet, to be honest with you. The greatest success in the world took place in the United States when it knew from the very beginning to separate religion and state. Yeah. The Europe moved forward in the 20th century, um, in the 19th century, actually, when they also began to, when they separated out religion and state. There, needs, there seems to be a return to that. Um, a lot of it is politically driven. A lot of that is yet to be fully understood, I'm afraid. I don't think we fully understand what the phenomenon took place. It seems a bit strange to me in an age when we understand so much more in terms of science that religion has managed to make a comeback in the ways that it has. But so much of it is yeah. political. Politicians cynically using religion in order to gain power. But, but, uh, so on that point, let's begin our conversation uh, again. Is ultra-conservatism uh, is a reactionary or a balancing act, if you will, to uber-progressiveness, to the woke movement, so to speak? Mark Schulman. I, look, I think you got to look at it in different ways. In terms of religion, look at Judaism. The Haredi, the ultra-Orthodox movement, was a response to modernity. You know, uh, the famous <clears throat> statement, anything new is no good, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, was the one of the leading Haredi rabbis stated back in I think in the 16th, 16th century or 17th century? The reality is that was a res that was a response to modernism, and it remains that way. The attempt to uh, get away from modernism in various forms to explain things with religion is a worldwide phenomenon. It's a phenomenon clearly within Judaism. I don't think it has anything to do with woke. I think woke is just this latest uh, latest surge in the Friend, last. Yeah. You know, Four years we're talking about woke. I don't even, not even sure what woke means. Yeah. But the reality is that's not. <laughs> no, what, I don't think that anyone does. It's the attempt to, to isolate. Yeah. But Mr. Fleischer, I do want to ask you the following Do you know one person, one person who eats kosher because? of laws because of regulation and not because he wants to eat kosher or sure in other sure. words they're called, they're called soldiers they're called soldiers they're called the government workers and they're called the people in the hospitals so to your answer i guess millions of people eat kosher because of laws so that was the, that was the answer to that one and with regarding i wanted to just throw out a question to all my other uh, panelists Please. and our moderator who can who can name easily the 12 hebrew months uh, the 12 months of the Jewish calendar. Does Ofer Kassif know the 12 months of the, the Hebrew calendar? Maybe he does, but I know that tons of Israelis, tons of Jews don't know it because we've had a secular coercion so, that has taken so away what? basic... So what? So that means that we are lacking fundamental so what? So knowledge what? of what so it is to be Jewish. Be and we want year. to propagate and promulgate the Jewish people, and that has always oh, been through knowledge. Why? Why? That has why? always why? been why? through why? knowledge. Know and if that. you don't know the months, that means that you're not so much of a person who knows has Judaism in their life and in their heart, and that means that there's a weakness no, in our people. Right? And we want to bring basics back to education. Please let Mr. Kassif reply, please. Sure. Yeah. First of all, as I said before, in regard to uh, the former discussion, who makes him or who gave 
Mr. Fleischmann, the monopoly over the definition and understanding of Judaism. I didn't take my, I just asked you if you know the 12 months of Judaism. Judaism may be experienced in many, many ways. And I think that that's exactly the pluralism I support. I want each and every person... Pluralism means ignorance in your life. Either Jewish... Wait, well, no. Mr. Fleischer, would you, would you decide, support the women of the world? Just right? a second, Don't please. pray at the Western decide, Wall. Not even the I have no... I, have, I think that women... I, I have no, I have no I, problem I, with I, people praying at the Wall I of different kinds. I don't care about every that. Person, I want each and every person who lives in the state of Israel to be free to decide by himself or herself how one wants to experience one's identity, either Jewish or not. That's not the business of the state. Now, if I focus only on those who consider themselves as Jews, that's their own right too. One may experience Judaism as Mr. Fleischmann does. This is his own right. I do not uh, oppose it. Uh, to some extent, of course, if one uses one's beliefs, religious or otherwise, to coerce others or to I, mock I, others or to exclude others, that's another issue. But assuming that that's not the case, each and every person, in our case, a Jew yeah. who lives in Israel, has one's right to experience one's own Judaism. And what the question is, what is taught in the schools? That's Fleischer. Yeah, anyway, exactly. but anyway it's it's what's taught in the schools. That. And There's I want to no answer the question that I keep getting asked about There's the Kotel. No I don't care who prays at the Kotel. I have, you I don't, have Mr. Fleischer. Yes, yes. Mr. Fleischer, you don't, no but uh, the, your elected some representatives do. It's up for debate. It's up for debate. I personally would make the Kotel much bigger. There's the there's the, there's the the family Kotel. And it doesn't bother me. On top of which, by the way, I want rights on the Temple Mount to pray fairly and equally Speaking of religious coercion, we have a jihadist <laughs> religious hey, coercion that doesn't let us pray the on the quo, Temple Mount, right? We, we are state, what? our state you enforces know, jihad laws really, really, and not freedom really, really, of really, Jews really, to pray in their holiest really, place. Really, and you're fighting about if women can pray here or there. I don't care if women pray at the Western Wall. It doesn't bother me. Put on tefillin. Do whatever you want. I don't care. And anything else since since 1928, more issues and more violence by issues around the Temple Mount. We would to think of doing that. Because of what? To be able to pray there as opposed to praying. I at the see. Courthouse? So you want to uphold the jihad laws to keep us to keep our mouths shut. That's really liberal of you. You want to uphold the jihad laws that, that make us ma the make a closer mouth on our holy spot. That's, that's a great piece of liberalism you got there. Risk management. I live in a country with a lot of risk. That's not my view. Those risks. Most of the people. You want you want to reject freedoms, basic freedoms based on a race. You want to you want to limit Jews from praying on the temple. We want to blow up our future. 